to cells. So here are the three main cell types of each of those kingdoms. The first one are animal cells, then plants, and then fungi. So basically, when we're identifying a cell, we're basically saying spot the difference. What can we see is missing and what can we see is present out of the organelles that we learned about. So looking at animal cells, straight away we can see that there's no cell wall in animal cells. Animal cells only have a cell membrane. So that means they're not rigid and they're actually quite squishy and they don't hold themselves together. We can also see there are no of those green chloroplasts which do photosynthesis. And we know that, being an animal, we can't make energy from the sun. We need to eat food. And lastly, animals have... If an animal cell does have vesicles, they're always quite small. Remember, vesicles store different chemicals and they isolate them and keep them separate. So moving on to plant cells, the most obvious difference we can see is around the outside here. So all plant cells do have a cell wall. And this gives them shape and structure, and that's how plants can hold themselves up without needing to have a skeleton like animals do. And we can also see here, plant cells have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts for photosynthesis. And then the final clue for figuring out a plant cell is a really large vesicle. And these are actually called a vacuole. Vacuole. And that's one of the easiest ways to identify a plant cell. There's one really big vacuole in the middle which plants use to store lots of different chemicals. So the last cell type is the fungi, the mushrooms and molds and yeasts, things like that. So fungi are a bit of a combination between animals and plants. We can see they do have a cell wall around the outside. It's made of different chemicals, but it's still a rigid cell wall. Fungi don't do photosynthesis though, so we can't see any chloroplasts. And lastly, where we can see vesicles, they're small, similar to an animal cell. Fungi don't have a giant vacuole. So these are the main differences between all these cell types, and we need to be good at being a detective and identifying a different cell when we see it. The last thing to think about now is figuring out how an organism's lifestyle relates to the organelles that are in the cell. Because really, Organisms have evolved a particular lifestyle based on the types of cells that they have. So the cell types match 
the lifestyle of the organism. So animals 